What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. I lost track of the camera. I forgot I put it over there. I looked up here. Uh, but this video I'm doing on one take, okay? No editing, no outro video, no intro. I'm going to see how well I can do this in one singular take. Now, if you want your name included in my outro video that I put after every video, then you can become a channel member. Hit the join button down below this video. You got to be a star level member. So that's $5 a month and up. It's a good way to support me and you get your name in every single video. So I'm about to do the outro for the next month. So if you become a member by tomorrow, then you can have your name included in that. Also, ask me a mailbag question down in the comment section below. Okay, say mailbag at the start of the question so that I know it's a mailbag question. I'm just going to be looking for comments with the word mailbag on them. I'm going to be dropping a mailbag tomorrow. Well, technically today. I'm recording this at midnight and I'm going to drop it right after this. But uh, I'm going to be talking about the second round of the NBA playoffs. I'm going to be rambling and giving my thoughts. It's not going to be uh, anything organized is just gonna probably be all over the place, but, uh, I know you guys don't mind when I just kind of kick back, put my feet up, and talk about NBA basketball. So, we're gonna talk about the four series of the second round, and then I'm going to talk about who I think is going to win the conference finals, which are now set. So, let's just start off in the Western Conference. We're gonna start off with... Phoenix and Dallas, we're going to start at the top left. We're just going to get right into the juiciest second round matchup of them all. And Dallas wins it in game seven. Blowing out the Phoenix Suns at home after the home team won every single game over the course of the series. I was very surprised. I had Phoenix. I didn't think Dallas would even really be able to compete much in the series. I thought it would be easier for Phoenix. And I was absolutely wrong. I've been wrong in terms of predicting the playoffs this year, all right? Uh, this happens sometimes. I don't predict everything correctly. Uh, you have Phoenix um, really struggling to slow down Luka Doncic. In Game 7, Devin Booker has a bad game. Chris Paul is nowhere to be seen. And Dallas moves on. Now, I still don't know how I feel about Dallas. I still think... Don't think Dallas is that good of a basketball team. I mean, they're obviously a good team. They made the Western Conference Finals beat Phoenix in a series. But for a Western, Western Conference Finals team, I still don't think they're that good. If you're a Mavericks fan, I mean, don't don't get too mad at me. That's just my opinion. But I'm you got a true test with Golden State. If Dallas makes the finals, I can't sit there and say anything about them. Obviously, they play defense a lot better than they used to. Jason Kidd's helped them figure out the defensive end of the ball. And then on offense, they shoot the ball well. They move the ball a little bit when it's not in Luka's hands, but obviously Luka runs the ship there, and he had a huge game seven. He actually, I think, was outscoring Phoenix at halftime by himself. So Phoenix absolutely falls apart. They... Uh, Going, I'm just going to look going forward for them. Uh, this was kind of the year they needed to make it happen. I thought this was the easiest year in the West that they were going to have. I think next year with Kawhi and PG back. And then, you know, you're going to have some other teams on the come up. I think the West is going to be harder next year for Phoenix. And given the fact that they couldn't take care of Dallas. And Chris Paul's going to be a year older. And he looked old. He just turned 37 and he looked old in Game 7. Uh, this was the year to make it happen for Phoenix. And they get didn't get it done. So... It turns into a bunch of talk about DeAndre Ayton. Could he be on the move? What is Phoenix going to do? And my prediction at this point is they keep DeAndre Ayton, Mikael Bridges, Devin Booker, and Chris Paul, and they bring back Bonnie Williams. And I think what one of Phoenix's downfalls were, they didn't have anybody they could consistently rely on to create shots. And you saw that in the game seven where they literally could not score the ball because when Chris Paul doesn't really have it and there's going to be nights where he doesn't have it at 37 years old, uh, the only other guy that Phoenix can consistently rely on to create a shot is Devin Booker. And Devin Booker struggled tonight. So when Devin Booker's not able to create shots and Chris Paul's having one of his off nights, given his age, Who's going to create shots for Phoenix? It's not going to be campaign. He's been awful all year. 
Uh, Mikael Bridges isn't a shot creator. Jay Crowder, Cam Johnson, they're not those types of players. So I think something for Phoenix to address this offseason is to find some shot creation, especially at a forward spot. That would definitely be beneficial for them. And try and upgrade their backup guard position at the very least. If they do that, then they could be right back here next year with a chance to make a serious run and contend. But it's obvious that they need to tweak some things. And if that's DeAndre Ayton going out... I don't really know what they can get back in a sign and trade for him, so that's very iffy to me. Maybe Miles Bridges with Charlotte, if Charlotte's willing to do that, and that would give Phoenix their shot creator that's at a forward position that can create for himself, create for others as an okay defender, but Phoenix is just in a weird position. It's going to be interesting to see what they do in the offseason. For Dallas, I mean, I'm rooting for Dallas in the Western Conference Finals, so Mavs fans, if you got pissed off at me saying, I still don't put a ton of stock in that team despite the run to the Conference Finals, I... I don't know, they're one of the worst conference finals teams in my opinion, but I'm rooting for you. Okay, so we're on the same side, all right? So so don't be too hard on me. I mean, at some point, I am guess I'm just going to have to inevitably respect Dallas because I probably don't respect them enough, and obviously I have not respected them enough. I did not think that they would be able to compete in this series. The whole Suns and Fourth thing was a little bit of a joke. Suns fans got way too confident this season, in my opinion, so... The, Sun, the Suns in four, uh, Phoenix has this easy, that was kind of poking fun at uh, some Suns fans, but I legitimately thought they were going to win in four or five games, to be quite honest with you. So I've been absolutely wrong, so don't believe me when it comes to talking about the Dallas Mavericks. Anyway, moving on to the other Western Conference series, you have Memphis versus Golden State. Golden State wins it in six. The Grizzlies won a game with jaw, won a game without jaw. There's debate about whether they're better or not with or without jaw, which I I think is ridiculous because Jaw is their best offensive player and they could have used somebody that they could have given the ball to down the stretch in a couple of games that he missed uh, and they weren't able to get buckets and crunch time against an experienced Golden State Warriors team. So let's just start with Memphis, the loser in this game. Um, they're obviously very young and then they're on the come up. Um, John Morant needs to become a little better defensively, needs to become a better shooter. Dylan Brooks has been too inefficient uh, given his role in the offense. Maybe they can try and find a better secondary scorer because, I mean, Desmond Bain stepped up this year. He had some good moments in the playoffs, but uh, Memphis has some assets. They can maybe look to make a play for somebody. They're a sneaky team for some big name guys on the trade market and maybe in free agency via sign and trade. So Memphis is in a position to even build on this in the off season. But I mean, they took golden state to six games and you know, if a couple other bounces go their way, maybe they're able to push this to seven and they would have had home court. Maybe they, maybe it could have been Memphis against Dallas in the Western conference finals. Imagine if that was the case, but uh, they're obviously have a very bright future. They don't need to shake anything up too much. They play really well as a team. I just think the conversation about them being better with John Morant is just ridiculous because correlation, and remember this, this is a saying, okay? Correlation does not equal causation. Just because something correlates doesn't mean that it's the cause. Just because Memphis won a lot of games without John Morant this year doesn't mean that they won a lot of games this year because John Morant wasn't playing. John Morant, uh, I think, helps their team. They need a closer down the stretch. I just think they play really, really freaking well as a team even when they don't have John Morant so they're able to remain competitive okay and you can't put too much stock into a 20 some game sample size this year without John Morant when it's obvious when John Morant's on the court that he's really freaking good at the game of basketball so um you know I think John Morant if people consider him a superstar people are overrating him a little bit because obviously he has some flaws in his game still he put up superstar numbers this year but it's not always about the numbers um but i think the people thinking that he's a negative value even for the memphis grizzlies is just ridiculous um i think he's going to come back next year better than ever and you're going to see a really good year out of memphis next year that was a team i was wrong on going into the season i didn't think they got better this past offseason but when john morant took a huge leap and won most improved and then desmond bain had a case for most improved and took a huge leap as well jern jackson jr took a leap defensively uh, that's what led to Memphis breaking out this year. So you never know with young guys and young teams who's going to take that leap. For Golden State, they're going to have home court advantage in the Western Conference Finals. And I feel like for the sixth time in, sixth time in nine years, you're going to see Golden State in the NBA Finals. That is my prediction for the Western Conference Finals series. I think the Warriors win in 
I think the Warriors win in five or six games. Now, that probably means that the Mavs are going to make it to the finals a la 2011 with Dirk and surprise everyone. Uh, as a lower seed, they're a four seed this year. They were a three seed that year. Uh, but I still think Golden State gets it done. And I don't think this Golden State is as good as any of the team, it's Golden State teams that made the NBA Finals in the past decade. I think this would be the worst one to make the finals, but I still think they're going to make the finals. I just think the NBA is wide open right uh, this year and you don't have any dominant teams like that. And I think that's pretty obvious at this point. So Golden State takes care of business. Clay Thompson had some good moments. That's good to see on a playoff stage for him. After missing a couple years, uh, it'll be interesting to see this Western Conference Finals. I'm looking forward to it. Now let's jump over to the East with Miami and Philadelphia. Philadelphia with Joel Embiid was competitive, but they still got blown out, especially in game six. Uh, could not push it to seven, and Miami ends up moving on. For Philadelphia, I mean, James Harden looks like he's lost a step. They don't really have any assets anymore. Uh, they have Doc Rivers as a coach, and they're going to bring him back, and I absolutely do not like Doc Rivers as a coach. Uh, I don't think he will ever lead a team to a conference finals. He got really freaking close in the bubble 3-1 lead, still couldn't freaking do it, okay? I don't think Doc Rivers is the right coach for the Philadelphia 76ers. You got Joel Embiid. There's going to be conversations about wasting Embiid's prime in a couple years if keep, things keep going like this, and I've already started to see some people talk about that, but it's not for a lack of trying. I mean, you go out and get James Harden, but James Harden in the playoffs hasn't been as good as James Harden in the regular season because he doesn't get as many calls, and the game's a little bit more physical, and then he's seemingly lost a step, and his first step was a huge part of his game and now isolation wise he's nowhere near the same and it's not like he's getting to the free throw line 12 times a game in the playoffs uh so with philadelphia they they're good enough where if they make some fringe moves maybe they could go on a run i mean dallas is in the conference finals right now but uh, philadelphia is just in a weird spot i wish they'd get rid of doc rivers and uh i mean Embiid's amazing and then harden maybe he's able to be healthier next season. Maybe it's just, you know, his hamstring isn't 100%. Maybe he's able to be a, a more like vintage James Harden next year. And then that's a scary team. But uh, I can't help feeling after this series that Philadelphia really screwed up in trading for James Harden and not some potential other packages out there like a Tyrese Halliburton package or a CJ McCollum package. Because instead of taking one of those guys and assets potentially for Ben Simmons, they gave up Ben Simmons and assets for James Harden and that obviously did not pan out. For Miami, I don't trust Miami going into the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, I mean, you got a team that plays together, has a lot of role players that really step up. I mean, Duncan Robinson wasn't even really getting minutes in the series. You had Gabe Vincent playing minutes, Max Strews playing minutes. They were having good moments. Miami does a really good job of developing role players, especially unheralded guys. I mean, Duncan Robinson, Max Strews, Gabe Vincent all went undrafted. And they're all playing or or have played a key part on a team making runs in the playoffs. So that's a tes testament to Eric Spolstra. Has to be a top three coach in the game. You could make an argument that he's the best coach in the game. And then Jimmy Butler's been playing well. But you got Bam. You got Kyle Lowry. I mean, it's just a well-rounded team. It'll be interesting to see if they make it back to the finals. Uh, they take care of business against the Philadelphia 76ers. Now let's talk about the final series. This was a game seven today as well with Boston and Milwaukee. Milwaukee will not be defending their 2021 NBA Finals championship as they fall in seven. And they really miss Chris Middleton in this one. I thought they could get by without Chris Middleton. It turns out that they could not. They end up losing this game seven in Boston. Really their chance to win the series was game six in Milwaukee, but Jason Tatum absolutely took over that game torched the milwaukee bucks and you look at phoenix and devin booker struggled down the stretch in the second round of his playoffs jason tatum stepped up and made a case for superstardom you know i don't know how you quantify superstardom for me a top 10 player is a superstar or you can extend that to maybe top 12 jason tatum i made a very strong case he won this series for Boston. Uh, Giannis was great on the other side, but Boston just doesn't have enough offensive players. Drew Holiday ha is prone to some very bad offensive games, and without Chris Middleton, I mean, who else is going to step up? Bobby Portis can have good moments, but uh, as your number two offensive guy, you don't want that. 
uh, Grayson Allen, Wes Matthews, they were playing George Hill. I mean, you just got a lot of mediocre players that I feel like Giannis makes look better, but guys that aren't really dynamic with the ball in their hands. So it's kind of a little bit of the same problem as Phoenix. Without Chris Middleton, you just don't have enough guys that can create off the dribble. And you've seen Milwaukee in games where Giannis had good games really struggle offensively. Because, I mean, Holiday's just too inconsistent. And without Middleton, Grayson Allen ain't going to create. Wes Matthews ain't going to create. George Hill is kind of washed. So there's some things for Milwaukee to look at. Just like Phoenix, the two finals members from last season, uh, I think both of them are going to go into this offseason looking for a little bit of more shot creation and dynamic offensive ability, especially off the bench. So Milwaukee does not defend their title. I think if they, I think they win the series if they had Middleton, though. As for Boston, their midseason turnaround has resulted in them in the Eastern Conference Finals. Ime Udoka has done a great job with this team. Props to him. There's a reason he was my number one coaching choice over Chauncey Billups after the Blazers fired Stotts. And even before the Blazers fired Stotts, I really wanted Ime Udoka. And people were saying he was doing a bad job halfway through the season. Now... He has the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals, which I know they've been there before. But this time, I think they get it done, and I think they win the Eastern Conference Finals and make the NBA Finals. And honestly, at this point, they are my pick to win the NBA Finals because they play on both sides of the ball. Jason Tatum's playing like a superstar. You got the secondary pieces. You got some shot creation there. I know Derek Wright struggled. Derek, Derek White, not Derek Wright. Derek White struggled in Game 7, but... Having a guy like him, Peyton Pritchard has had some good moments and had some good moments in Game Seven with Jalen Brown, with Jason Tatum, Al Horford's been playing really good defensively, defended Giannis about as well as you could possibly defend him, and then Grant Williams stepped up 27 points in Game Seven. I think this team is just clicking at the right time. They were down, uh, had a closeout game on the road to Milwaukee, and they took care of business and uh, won in a hostile environment and then came home and took care of a game seven so i have a lot of faith in boston going forward uh, but i had faith in milwaukee and i had faith in phoenix so if you're a boston celtics fan don't blame me if you lose but i might be a jinx here i'll knock on i'll knock on wood for you um but yeah you got boston miami golden state dallas should be two good conference finals it was nice to get a couple game sevens Neither one was particularly close down the stretch. I always love close game sevens, but in my first playoff round recap video, I was lamenting the fact that there was no game sevens in the first round. Eight series, no game seven. So I just asked for a game seven. I asked for a game seven in the Boston Milwaukee series, got it. I just didn't, you know, expect Boston to manhandle them. Obviously, Chris Middleton factors in there. And then I did not expect Dallas to blow the doors off Phoenix. I had a rec league game at five in the Phoenix Dallas game started at five. I got out of that game. We choked a double digit lead. God damn it. Uh, but I got out of that game and looked at the scoreboard and saw like 54, 27 Dallas up. I, I was, I, I've never checked a score and been that shocked in my life. That was something. So anyway, that's my playoff round recap. As I said at the start of the video, leave a mailbag question down below with the comment mailbag so I know that it's you. And then if you want to be in the outro video coming up over the next month, because I update them about once a month since the memberships are monthly, uh, then if you want to be in that video, become a channel member, uh, become a star level channel member. So there's starter all-star superstar and mvp so if you're all-star superstar or mvp you get your name in the outro video so that's a way to support the channel you can support the channel for free though by leaving a like on this video i really do appreciate it subscribe if you haven't already and i'm out of here until next time as always peace out go blazers